The World Bank has a sobering forecast for the future of China's economy. It's produced a report saying without reform, the globe's second biggest economy will suffer a major slowdown over the next 20 years, with major consequences for the whole world. Well, let's get more on this from author and international consultant Adrian Solbucci. He joins me live from Buenos Aires in Argentina. So, Adrian, the World Bank has warned China faces a major economic slowdown in the next two decades. Um, warning of a global impact. Yeah, what sort of effect could that have then? Uh, I don't think that would be the case. <clears throat> China is doing something very intelligent. They are not allowing the World Bank or the United States or anybody else to force them to revalue their currency. People must understand that when countries have overvalued local currencies, it becomes very difficult for them to export and it very easy for them to import. So they become markets. And what that's what happens, for example, in my country of Argentina that permanently overvalues its local currency so that it can uh, export with, with great difficult, difficulty. It can import very easily. And so we become a market. We become indebted in U.S. dollars and the locally overvalued currency makes it easy to buy dollars so that we can pay foreign debt. China does what any intelligent sovereign country should do, which is exactly the opposite. They have an undervalued uh, currency or they just let it slide to its, its real and true value so that they can export a lot and they do not yet become a mass market for other countries' products. So in a way, I think that the Chinese are doing the right thing. I think that they are continuing to grow. And of course, this raises many concerns in America, Britain and the European Union, basically the euro and dollar zone, because they would like to see countries uh, uh, doing the things they wanted to do, as Argentina, Brazil and many other countries do. But China will just not toe that line. But I read analysis from various commentators saying China's a ticking time bomb. It is indeed heading for collapse. So there's no reason then, from your point of view, to suggest there is a possible economic slowdown in China in the next 20 years. They might have a, a slowdown, but uh, in the sense that as countries run deeper in, and deeper into economic turmoil, they will import less. So naturally, the European Union, even the United States, will be importing less Chinese wares, and that will have its, uh, its, its impact on, on the Chinese economy. But I think that the Chinese have shown themselves to be quite shrewd, and they will adjust the relationship between their, the, the Xuan, their currency, and other currencies based on their own needs and not based on American needs. I think just, that just, is just briefly, though, the Chinese people themselves, will they be benefiting from this uh, uh, economic, uh, uh, obviously, improvement and benefit from this? Definitely. Don't forget that China has a two system, uh, is a double system. The, the, the very rich coastal areas have become capitalist in, in practical effect, but the hinterland is still staunchly communist. And what the Chinese are doing very shrewdly is they are taking their time, decades of time, even planning future cities which are being built and just left there for the future, so that as this progresses through the decades, they will be able to incorporate a greater part or greater share of their population into this new system, but they are doing it at their speed and they are doing it based on their needs and not based on American or rather US dollar and Euro zone requirements and needs. China, of course, part of those emerging group of economies known as the BRICS. Should those other countries be concerned at all about the future or are they looking very solid indeed, those well, the likes of obviously Brazil, Russia, India uh, and South Africa? Well, we have to be very careful because the whole concept of BRICS is not something that we invented, for example, in Latin America or China or South Africa or India, but it is something that Goldman Sachs invaded. So in a way, it's very dangerous to think from the point of view of the bankers who try to lump uh, one series of countries here, they lump another series of countries there. The BRICS countries are very different amongst themselves indeed. China is very different from Brazil. Brazil has an overvalued currency, for example. Uh, South Africa is very different from India. So I think that each of these countries has to do its own thing, so to speak, at their own time, based on their own national interest, and they should really lend deaf ears to the national interest of the Europeans and the national interest of the United States. Sure, we can talk, but the key issue, and I think China is the, and Russia are the prime examples, the key issue for every country is its own national interest and not the national interest of uh, circumstantially powerful hegemons like the United States and some of the countries in the European Union. But nevertheless, as a group of economies, will we see further influence from those BRICS countries in comparison to what we've, uh, you've just been talking about, the US, for example? Absolutely. If anything, I think the Pentagon is probably a 
a good reference point. They know that starting in the year 2017, America's greatest enemy or potential enemy is China because it will be the largest economy. So knowing that economy very often calls the shots, I think that the Pentagon planners, although they are not in the economic field, they know very well what the future has in store. And they are probably the only long term planners in the Western world. The Chinese, however, with 10,000 years of experience, have been long term planners for a very long time. Adrian, good to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us live there in Buenos Aires. Adrian Salbucci there. Thanks a lot.